this week in dear-led towns and cities across the country, Cape Town allocates 600 million rand to free basic services. Dear-led Midval receives its eighth consecutive clean audit and Twane is planning to recruit 5,000 new job seekers. Where we govern, the DA truly gets things done. Now, onto this week's Dear to Work feature, we speak to the Executive Mayor of Umgeni Municipality, Chris Papas. Chris, hello, my favorite mayor in South Africa. Are you well? I'm well, so I'm sure you say that to all the mayors, but you're definitely my favorite <laughs> inside track host. <laughs> Listen, I want to find out, I mean, what an exciting time. It's probably been a whirlwind for you uh, since, uh, since uh, the 1st of November. How has it been? Uh, how is it going uh, in, uh, in Umgeni, our first year-run municipality in KwaZulu-Natal? It's going well. So um, it's a lot of hard work. Um, things are a lot worse than what we expected, uh, you know, looking in from opposition benches. Um, the road ahead is going to be long, um, but we're making progress. And the important thing is we're getting buy-in and there's, a, there's an incredible vibe and atmosphere in all communities. You know, people want to see things happen. And we're just drawing off that energy, the, you know, the sort of the hope and the inspiration of the community. So, yeah, making progress slowly um, and, and trying to sort out the, the basic things, the operational issues in the municipality so we can start to deliver. Yeah. You speak, I mean, about what you found. I mean, this is a common theme for our new DA governments where people say, look, I mean, we thought things were bad from opposition benches until we got into government and we started to uncover the true extent of the rot. And so, I mean, what are some of the things that you found, particularly when it pertains to corruption in the municipality, which has hindered service delivery in a big way? So I think the most obvious thing is is the incredible sort of inflation of prices. So you know, I, I, I've, what I've tried to do is is bring in you know private sector guys to to give us quotes comparatively to what has been been charged. Um, you would have heard during the election campaign of of the South Africa's most expensive Wendy House. You know, yes. It's those sorts of things where there's been a lot of top slicing, a lot of you know inflation of of uh, contracts or, or quotations. Um, the, the other thing is the appointment of, of people irregularly. And when I say irregular, I mean people who aren't qualified or skilled to do the work. Uh, we recently completed a skills audit where 30% or 28% of our employees are neither skilled nor qualified to, for the positions that they are in. So, I mean, there's another issue, you know, so, so how is our HR department functioning so that we end up with the, these sorts of people? But mm. we are faced with a situation where we have, uh, you know, an SIU report that you, you spoke about the corruption in terms of, of the um, COVID, COVID funds. So we are, we are in there. We've, we've got yeah. 19 and a half million rand who, that has been, oh. been misused. Uh, and we're investigating that and we're making sure that those who are implicated in the SIU report uh, will be held accountable. So yeah. there, there's a number of ongoing issues. Yeah, and that's exactly what I wanted to, to, to jump into, Chris, to say, look, I mean, now you've uncovered these things um, in your first 100 days. I don't know if it has been 100 days, but in your first 100 days, what have been some of the things that you think, look, we've, we're have we making progress, we've managed to do these couple of things to try and get us to a better place than when we found this municipality? Sure, yeah, so I, th I think we've got a, a, about half a month more before we get to our 100 days. But when we took over office, there's, there's very few systems and processes, procedures, standard operating procedures and things like that in place. So the stuff that we're, we've been doing is not the stuff that people get to see. You know, often you, you get into government and you want to you know, jump in and fix the potholes. You want to start painting. You want to do all of those sorts of things. But just a couple of examples. We own 40 brush cutters, four work. We own six tractors, one works. Um, you know, we have 101 critical vacancies. So it's all yeah. these sorts of things that the public don't see that we're trying to, to sort out. Um, but in doing so, we are trying to modernize our institution as well, you know, making sure that our organogram is not from 60 years ago, making sure that the positions fulfill the needs of the community and things like that. So, I mean, there have been some, some, some 
sort of tangible achievements, the ones that you yeah. can see or visible yeah. at least. The Curry's Post landfill site, um, it's still a challenge, but there's vast improvement and people can now access it. Um, there have been issues that relate to our, our transparency in the way that we hire. So we've instituted a, a sort of a lottery system uh, okay. where, we, where we hire our EPWP and our CWP workers, so your temporary staff. So that's become much more transparent and much more fair. So there, mm. there's those things that we have been working on. Mm. And as John was saying earlier, some of these things, like you saying, they're not sexy, you know, they're, they're, it's not ribbon cutting. It's now fixing and uprooting the rot that is in the system so that when you start delivering in things that people can see, it's done fairly, it's done transparently, and it's also not done behind smoky dark rooms where, you know, there's a lot of top slicing. So it's important work, not not always visible, but incredibly important work. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the foundational stuff that you need, you know, silly things, and I call them silly because they're not visible, but a cost containment policy or a fruitless, wasteful and irregular expenditure policy. So if you haven't got those things in place, you can't hold people accountable and you can't expect your staff to know what to do when presented with situations that might get us into trouble as a municipality. So all these things are happening in the background to make us ready or build capacity institutionally to be able to deliver services to the people. Two more things, Chris, that I want to find out from you. We've seen um, with the floods uh, that have affected a number of people um, who are in your municipality, there's been quite a number of interventions coming from, from the municipality. How has that been like dealing with? So, yeah, it was actually quite an incredible storm that hit us. Um, it, it wasn't sort of isolated in one part of the municipality. It was wall-to-wall -wall damage. Uh, our so, assessment came up just for infrastructure. This is not human-related, but, but infrastructure-related was 272 million rand, which is more than half our annual budget. So, so we, we, you know, on top of dealing with 22 years' worth of ANC governance, we are now dealing with this particular issue. But we've had an incredible response in terms of humanitarian need. Uh, we've partnered with a, a number of NGOs and a number of, of private sector um, sort of sponsors. Uh, SAPI Forestry has been of great assistance, um, Gift of the Givers, our local NGOs. People have really come on board. The communities, you know, just coming together to say there's other communities in need. What can we do to help? Uh, we had farmers come out to, to clear trees that had fallen on informal settlements. So, like, again, there's this incredible want or desire to work to all people to work together and help each other across communities. Um, and we're just trying to harness that energy to build a society uh, where, you know, people feel as if they're part of the same future. Uh, and dealing with the storm has, you know, sort of it's, it's helped in a way. So it's tragic, but it's really brought people together as well. Mm. And then, I mean, one of the things that I realized when I was there uh, campaigning with you uh, was that you were incredibly passionate about youth unemployment um, and particularly youth opportunities. And so well, how have you, you know, what are some of the things you're identifying that you're wanting to do to create uh, employment opportunities for young people as somebody who's particularly young yourself and who sees the deep need in some of the communities in Umgeni? So I think John spoke about it as well um, earlier about creating, you know, an, an opportunity society. So it's not just about, you know, the handouts. It's not about giving people things. It's about improving the, the, the their situation around them so that they can actually improve themselves mm. um, or to create an environment where those opportunities are easily accessible. So from small things, we're working to um, expand our, our Wi-Fi network so that people can access, you know, jobs and information more freely. Um, we are working to build more private sector partners. And um, one of those is, for example, with the Howick Falls precinct development, which will, you know, be our version of the VNA waterfront or the Durban promenade. Mm. Um, because we realize as a municipality, if, we, if we're going to try and do things ourselves, which we shouldn't be anywhere as a municipality, it's going to take years and years and years to get anywhere. So we need yeah. to create private sector partners that will bring those opportunities in. But also just lending an ear to the youth. Um, I'm attending a, 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 it's an unemployment uh, forum for, yeah. for youth uh, next week. So, and, and the purpose of that is to listen to, to you know, we, we don't want to be a government that imposes. We want to be a government that takes instruction and listens from to its citizens and then tries as best as possible to roll out as many of those suggestions as possible. Mm. And 
I mean, and lastly, Chris, I mean, do you, I mean, I think it's absolutely incredible that we have got uh, young leadership in, in, in Umgeni municipality, because I do think that young people to the front. And uh, uh, how has been the response from people and the municipality, you know, officials? Sometimes, you know, they get very apprehensive about the fact that, you know, there's a new government coming in. Um, how has just been the reception with a community? as the new leadership when no 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 sandil i think ukubala ke le kuthi uma sikhuluma ngomphakathi sikhuluma ngokulalela first of all um because people have been ignored for so long um and and you want you want to know that listen we are a new government but we we are a listening government we are a responsive yeah. government so ukubala ke le kuthi siphendula abantu noma kuyinto encane noma nje kuyimbuzo ebonakala ukuthi no lo muntu it's not they would never expect a response so to be to be very responsive and i think mm -hmm. as as younger leaders we we are able to do that we are able to engage with people get to more places be more responsive and people have appreciated that a lot more than the, the previous government but in terms of our own staff as well to just give them a platform to talk um, they've been there's been so much political interference, and all we had to do is say, listen, we're going to take a step back, sit and tell us what your problems are, what do you need to get your job done, because, mm -hmm. because people want to work, people want to be proud to come to work, and they can you know stand in the line at pick and pay, and if someone says something about the municipality, they can turn around and say, no, I actually work there, uh, and I'm proud mm -hmm. to work there, and and that's what we've done. We've opened up platforms for our staff to talk to us, um, and then likewise with with members of the public. Yeah. Well, Chris, thank you so very much. And uh, thank you to the work that you uh, and the deputy mayor are doing. Uh, and we are saying continue delivering to the people of Umgeni.